So, I just took a shower, washed away the nastiness from the raping from two nights ago here at Cabin 12 at the Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. Hey, sweetheart. Me who was gonna cuddle up here. You just down there. It was really potent in here. She was dropping some really nasty shit. But I thought, you know what I thought I'd do right now? Is I talk about her. Who, she, who I believe her to be. Um, based on my, uh, well, what she does to me and what seeing her and stuff like that. So the first time I saw her was at the Manoa Mart in uh, Manoa in Honolulu, Hawaii. And she gave herself away by being all smirky and evil. But what was interesting is I went in there to buy a pack of smokes. And, I mean, I've known those people for decades now, but they weren't helpful, um, sadly. And, um, and uh, I had just bought my pack of smokes and hadn't even noticed anybody else really in the store. Um, and I was walking out, and something just made me turn. Um, two things, actually was that she ordered a pack of smokes, uh, American Spirit Yellow, and I smoked, at that point, American Spirit Gold. And um, it's not a common cigarette, but that wouldn't normally make me turn. It was just this feeling. It was just this weird, yucky, like something bad there feeling, and I needed to turn around. And I turned around, and there she was, standing there. And she had long brown hair that... When I have good days, my hair looked similar to that. She has n she had nice hair. I don't know if she cut her hair to look like mine or not. Um, probably. Real ugly old face of like, you know, the drug addict, homeless thing. And super tiny. Super tiny for like a grown woman. Um, like the body of a child, you know. Wearing super baggy clothes. And she kind of like half turned and was like... And didn't look me in the eye. And I just knew. I just knew who she was. I knew she was the crazy bitch that was crawling around my attic. Um, I knew she was the one that when I was walking up with the dogs coming back from the beach one day. And beach always made my hair look even nicer because the curls and this, you know, the uh, salt water and everything. And, and Brian Cam next door, like, was like, hey. You know? And I was like, like, we seriously hate each other. Like. You're the guy that I said to you, you know, 11 years ago, I know you know who killed my dogs, and you laughed and said, prove it. So, no, we're not friends, and you're not going to be like, hey, you know. And it took him a couple seconds to comprehend that I wasn't her. And then when, because the look on my face was obviously not, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the manipulative little girl that says whatever you need me to say, so you... We'll do what I want. <laughs> I'm like the real fucking bitch that'll tell you what the fuck you are. Ooh, that was right in my eyeball. Um, and so, so I knew right then that she looked enough like me that even Brian Cam would be fooled. Um, it was disturbing to think that also I was with my dog. So had she taken my dogs out before and stuff like that? Um, but I knew then and there that she looked enough like me that, like, even the, a guy that's helping her to fucking have me be gang raped and sodomized in my own home and drugging me for no fucking reason. Like, we didn't like each other, but I never did shit to his, him and his, you know. Um, I was a good neighbor. Um, I was, in general, pretty fucking quiet. Um, except for when I played music. When I worked out or when I cleaned or when I was doing remodeling on my own house. Like painting, pulling up carpet, putting down floors, whatever. Um, you know, building a fence. Anyhow. Um, and then I saw her again. And uh, that was in Eugene, Oregon. And she was by my bus. And I was super out of it. Um, having been drugged and everything, but her and all her crack whore friends were down there, all the drug addicts, you know, homeless drug addict, weird fucking people that we all know now that we see around, um, them. 
And um, that was also the moment that I realized that, that she's probably originally from this area, like not where I am now, but that area is the Pacific Northwest um, because she just seemed to have a big base of people there. Um, and it just made me think she's probably from here, you know, or has some that she's lived here for an extended period of time at some point in her life. And then I saw her again, um, up at Powell Butte Park in a black BMW driven by a meth head looking whacked out white man. Um, and the car had like splattered white paint on it and no like no plates and they were being followed by their bodyguards, apparently, these two gang member black dudes, neither of which fit, fit in at Powell Butte Park, <laughs> period, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I saw her then, and she was in a hoodie, and she was all crouched down, and that's not the first time I'd actually seen her in a blue car driven by a Hispanic guy um, right after the very horrendous gang raping out, outside of the Weatherman Hotel. Um, after that happened, I went to a park to take my dogs out because they were just so fucked up, like so wigged out. They wouldn't even go outside of the RV to go to the bathroom when I first came to. Um, they were just so afraid. Um, obviously they had been taken out of the RV, probably put into one of the hotel rooms at the Weatherman Hotel. Um, that's what my guess would be so that they'd be out of the way for the gang raping and, um... And, uh, yeah. Yep. And she was in that blue car with that Hispanic male because I was sitting at that park and I stayed there for a while. Um, I let them run around and they felt, you know, just trying to make them feel better and got Kitty out and let him walk around and, um, just sort of cleaned, I remember, and just trying to figure out what to do. I was in an enormous amount of pain and mentally, like, blah, and drugged and, you know, and then this guy, I mean, they had a couple people come through, but this guy pulled up a Hispanic male in a blue kind of sporty looking, um, coupe sort of stupid looking car. And, um, I had seen that car following me around repeatedly for weeks and I just knew she was in there cause he was talking to somebody in the back seat and it made no sense cause there was nobody in the front seat, you know, and I just got a feeling that she was in there and she probably was. You know, because uh, those those times where she gets the whole gang raping thing and, you know, it just probably just boosted her up so much to have be the queen of this event, you know, where they were all staying at the Weatherman Hotel and then coming out to gang rape me in my RV right in front. And, you know, because when I went back that night to make the police report, I actually went to the Weatherman Hotel and sat in the parking lot thinking this is where I'm going to call the cops and have them come so I can explain to them where I was and blah, blah, blah. Um, because of COVID that's not, you know, and, but no, actually that's not why it's because they all started just flooding the parking lot and surrounding me. And this little fucking gangster wannabe bitch came and she came walking around and she's like with her pants hanging down low and you know, some little girl who can't decide if she's a lesbian or not. Um, and she just, she had the gall to fucking say something to me. And I was looking at her thinking, you know, I should shoot you in the fucking face. Like, you think you're so badass and like with her, yeah, you know, it would be a fight. If it was just me and her, it would be a fight. But no guarantees that you're going to win, you know. Um, you think. But anyhow, um, then I left and just went to the police station to make the police report instead. Um, because I called them and said, I'm being fucking surrounded here. Like you guys can come and they're here and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, they just piled into the parking lot, like one after another, one after another, one after another. Um, and you know, no hiding it, no nothing. <laughs> like it was like, what the fuck? Like this is really the world that, you know, um, so back to crack whore. And that's just the name I call her cause she looks like a crack whore. Um, so right now she's up there. So let's talk about her. Let's make her feel. Let's talk about who I believe her to be. Now the fact that she rapes, sodomizes, sex traffics me, tortures my body, that would lead me to believe that this was her life. You know, this is how she grew up. Um, she obviously has an extreme hatred for women. Um, I would say that she had a very bad mom and um, that probably trafficked her. 
for drugs or something like that. Um, she was definitely repeatedly raped and sodomized as a kid. Um, I would guess she was the kind of kid that, like, she was just never a nice person. This is what I would say. Is she was never a nice person. Like, probably when she was a kid, she tortured other kids. Um, maybe, you know, if there was a kid that had Down syndrome at the school, she would be the one that would be, like, torturing somebody that was weaker than her. Because she's so tiny that, um, that's a disadvantage in life sometimes, you know? I'm a small person. Um, people seem to think that, but she's way smaller than me. Um, about 85 pounds, I'd say, you know, um, about 4'10". I'm 5'2". Um, right now I probably weigh between 110 and 115, I would guess. Um, yeah, we're not really that similar. It was just the hair thing. And from far away, you know, everyone always thinks I'm so tiny and blah, blah, blah. Even when I gain weight, they just have that sort of impression in their head. And I never get super fat. Um, but yeah, so she would have been that kid, you know, that was just super cruel and mean to other kids. I'm sure she has a record on her. I'm sure she spent time in foster care or in the system somehow. Probably has an arrest record. Um... And then Hawaiian Syndicate slash Sovereignty literally picked this chick off the fucking streets of Waikiki or not Waikiki, of, of Hawaii. I don't know where she was living. But because of the stench and every, we all know that stench of homeless person where it's just unwashed person, unwashed clothes, that sort of decay smell. Um, that's what I kept like, you know, I was smelling that in my bed, on my sheets, on my clothes, um finding clothes that were, had been clean and folded in my fucking drawer, or like, in the fucking laundry basket, and stench, like, that stench of her, um, the attic space smelled like that, she just stinks, you know, she really has this, like, and that's a sign of her mental state, that she doesn't want to bathe, you know, because she did take a shower sometimes in my, in my shower, or someone did, maybe the people who were raping me, I don't know, Oh, let me not forget her little friend. They recruited this girl named um, Jessica Tran, who lives a couple houses down on Alani Drive in in Honolulu, Hawaii. And she's always been this. She's she has a she does have a diagnosed most likely mental illness. Um, she was given that house by her grandmother. She didn't work. Um, supposedly she was in school, but I'm guessing that was a struggle for her because um, mentally she just. There was obviously something wrong with her. And the people across the street, this Howley guy and Asian woman that were straight people, um, kind of looked out for her. I think the family probably asked, you know, them to sort of keep an eye on her and, or, you know, just sort of insinuated that. Um, but yeah, she lived in this house all by herself, you know. And when I got back to Hawaii, every time... As soon as my tenants moved out and I was there on a regular basis while the construction was being done, that ended up the guy totally fucked me over. Um, but um, not totally, partially fucked me over, I'll be honest. Um, but she would be at my fucking house. Like, and she lived a couple houses down, but she'd always be standing out by my mailbox or right out in front of my house or right across the street from my house. And she would be there or down on the corner where I'd drive up. Um, and I'm literally talking every single time that I'd come or leave the house. If I was returning home, she was there. If I was leaving the house, she was there. She was the lookout. And they used her. And, um, I believe she is the one that participated with this insane crack whore bitch who's a Howley girl. Um, she may be mixed. I don't know with maybe Native American. I'm not sure. Um, but, or she's just straight up Howley. Um, but when I woke up in my entire top of my foot was black and blue. Um, and this is because she had started getting really angry at me. This is Jessica Tran. Um, because at some point I just said to her, you know what? You need to get the fuck away from my house. Like you're making me uncomfortable standing out here all the time. It's it. I don't know why you need to do this, but I don't want you here. And you know, any person would feel that way. Like she's not mentally well and it didn't make any sense, you know? And she'd be like, I'm walking. I'm like, you're not walking anywhere. Like, you're literally, like, right in front of my house all the fucking time. Like, you know, walk down, down by your fucking house. Go stand in front of your own fucking house. Um, 
So, and I didn't say all that. I just said, I, you're making me uncomfortable. I don't, you need to fucking get the way, get away from my house. Like, and she got all like, meh. And then she'd be out there all the time and she'd follow me as I'd walk the dogs. And, and, you know, at one point I was walking and, um, and she's like, you're following me. I'm like, literally, you've been waiting outside my house for me to leave. How can I be fucking following you, you stupid fucking diseased bitch? Like, fuck, you know? And she just was taunting me. And it was like, oh, dude, I just wanted to fucking lay her the fuck out. So I think she did that to my foot with this crazy bitch. Because I think that they brought her in after a little while, um, making sure that I was totally knocked out, thinking that she could handle, like, any interactions that we had, that she wouldn't, like spill the cards or whatever, um, which was delicate, I'd say, for them because, again, she was mentally not well. Um, but I think they let her do that, abuse my body and torture my body because she had this anger and aggression towards me because I would, didn't want, I didn't want to let her follow me around and wait outside my house for me all the time, like, um, but she didn't like being told what to do, um, which is very similar to this crazy crack whore up here. Um, and so, but that's just a side note. And then when I called the police finally about everything and I started making police reports, um, when I just bit the bullet cause I know they're so fucking corrupt, like, you know, sort of like what, 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 <laughs> like, but document, 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 forced them, you know? Um, and, uh, so I told them about her. I had a detective sign to the case, one of my cases. And when he called up, I said, this is one of the people that is involved and you can go talk to her because she's never going to be able to handle her shit. Like she's never going to be able to not be this convulsing. Are you fucking kidding me? Vita, Vita, wake up. Vita, wake up. Vita, Vita, wake up. Vita. It's okay, V. Vita. It's okay. Um, so I told the detective about her and said, you know, you go talk to her. She's never going to be able to handle because she's not mentally sound, you know. So if you start pressing her about this, she'll fucking crack or you'll know. You'll know that she's fucking lying, you know. And interestingly enough, the very next day, I called the police or they called me. I can't remember. And the detective told me that she was not there. And for a couple months, they told me that they were going to her house and knocking on the door and she wasn't answering the door. And um, they told me blatantly, Vita, Vita, sweetie, 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 wake up, wake up. Vita, wake up, wake up. They told me blatantly that they believed that the syndicate took her to one of the outer islands to hide her because she wouldn't be able to, you know, have a conversation with them without fucking spilling the shit. So again, you know, people that are like, you don't have any proof or, you know, you're crazy, this isn't happening, go talk to Jessica Tran on Alani Drive. Because um, she disappeared for a long time. And in that time when she wasn't there, there were people going into her house and they were not people that you would normally see going into her house or even in that neighborhood. Um, just super kind of scummy looking, you know, whatever kind of people. And they were going in and out of there. And I don't know if anybody else saw, I don't know, but she didn't show up for, till like, I want to say almost a year. Like they kept her hidden, like maybe nine months at least, you know, um, they kept her out of there. And when she showed back up, she had shaved her entire fucking head, which for a woman is a big decision. <laughs> um, and for somebody who's mentally ill, maybe not, maybe, you know, not the first time I would have seen that from somebody that's mentally ill. Um, but she did that because she was afraid that, her DNA would be in my house and that they would catch her through that. I bet you anything. I would bet everything I have on that, that that's why she did that. Um, you know, and I'm sure they tried to tell her that that's not going to happen. You don't have to worry about it. But, and plus, 
you know, where would her DNA be in my house? I mean, how the fuck would I know? You know, and I'm not a skanky piece of shit, so I normally clean my shit. You know, wash my sheets, do all those things, especially with the homeless smelling on it. It was disgusting. Um, so, uh, yeah, so she, uh, she, um, yeah, she was in my fucking house. She was in my fucking house, Jessica Tran. And she knows this bitch that I'm talking about is a very real fucking person. So we'll go back to that. So she's a very real person. I think she has ties and roots in the Pacific Northwest. Um, she was a homeless girl in Hawaii that the Hawaiian Syndicate Sovereignty just basically plucked off the street. They probably knew her as being a psychopath. They probably knew her as just being a, just, and you know, through drugs. Um, obviously a drug user. All her friends are drug users. Um, and they stuck her up in my fucking attic, um, because they wanted to be able, first they probably used her because she looked so similar enough to me that she could be coming in and out of the house and the neighbors across the street would possibly think that that was me. And I mean, unnecessary because really, I mean, everybody knew in the neighborhood what was going on and nobody was going to, nobody had anybody to call anyways. You can't call the cops. There's no fucking, like, justice in fucking Hawaii for anybody. And that's how the Hawaiians have set it up. So, um, so yeah. And then at some point when I started realizing that they were coming into my house every time I was leaving the house, um, whether my animals were there or not, um, that's when I started having my family come and be there. And that's when they decided to start coming in at night. It was about March. It was about this time, two years ago, that they started coming into my house at night. And I only knew that because I was waking up with the bruises and the semen coming out of me half a dozen times and cutting off my pubic hair. <laughs> You'd think that would be enough. Um, but even for me, because I had no recollection of it and no... I mean, I, <laughs> I did not expect that because I really felt like I have two pig big, you know, rather large pit bull dogs that will bark and they'll never be able to get in my house without me knowing. That's what I felt and that's what I thought, like a normal person. But I had these little audio recorders that I had been leaving on and I had started doing that in Portland and I had caught a woman, the Vagos lady from next door with the long uh, red hair that, again, I think they were trying to get somebody to look like me, um, <clears throat> you know, similar enough so if somebody saw at a glance somebody that they might think that was me, whatever. Um, and uh, I caught them on these little audio recorders. I had accidentally, they were in my fanny pack and or in my backpack, and I had left it on by accident, actually, or flipped it on by accident. And I the next day, I noticed that it was on, and I was like, huh, and I checked it, and I was like, wow, it went on all night. And I thought, I'm just going to listen out of curiosity, really. Even with all that stuff already happened. <laughs> Unlike what people want to think, that I'm crazy and want to believe this crazy story. No, 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 no. I think you'd be really surprised if you're in this position and being victimized how much you do not want to believe that these things are happening. So you fight that reality. Um, and I did. I fought the reality of the situation way more than people would ever believe. Um, and so I listened. And there, there they were. Inside my fucking house, this bitch that's now up here and this woman who's in cabin 11 named Jan, at least that's what she told me her name was, that's driving that white SUV um, that has the California plates. Um, yeah. So, but let's talk about her psychopathy. So she was obviously born and raised in some horrible environment. I'm sure she has some sort of history. I'm sure she's had been forced into either drug stuff or foster care or whatever at some point. Um, obviously, she was severely abused. Maybe she was one of those kids that grew up in, like, a dog cage or something. Um, I'm guessing her mom pimped her out for fucking drugs. Um, you know, she's just one of these people that got, like, fucked by society because nobody gave, gave a fuck. She was born to parents who didn't give a fuck about her. And then she had nobody else that gave a fuck about her, too. And what I find interesting about her is that now, 
she's helping the very same people that literally made her into the demon bitch thing that she is. Like, she didn't have the ability, she had no inner capacity to change her course or direction in life. Um, she also doesn't have the capability to acknowledge to herself or recognize that the people that made her into this disgusting, nasty piece of shit thing that she is, um, that made her like this are the ones that she's helping now to terrorize and stalk and do all this shit to me. Um, she thinks she's big time. I think she very much mirrors the guy that started this whole thing that lived at, um, Mark and Nathalie Walker's house in Kool-Aid track, um, that used this whole thing with me to become bigger in the drug trafficking, sovereignty, whatever community, um, basically on the backs of my, <laughs> my suffering. Cause I, I really didn't mean much of anything. And I think she's doing the same thing. Like she was literally just a homeless person that was probably a psycho drug user known as being just not a nice, probably cruel and weird. And, you know, um, but they picked her because number a couple of reasons, right? She was small. She kind of looked like me enough. Um, but also because she was fucking, she had such little self-respect for herself that she would literally go crawl up into my attic and stay there for hours. And even on the days that I caught her and I could smell her pooping up there or smell the smell of poop coming from up there, she'd still crawl back in there when she got out. It, it's such little self-respect that you have for yourself to do these things, you know, you, you, she, she's acting like she's this hardcore bitch that she's giving away my vagina, sex trafficking me, but most sex traffickers, women sex traffickers are driving around in nice cars, they're getting their hair done, they're getting their nails done, like they're the top bitches because they're, they're farming out all the other ones, you know, but that's not her, see, and they had to pick someone that nobody would give a fuck if she disappeared, you know, because she's now followed me to all these different states, right? And you know what that tells me? Is that there's nobody really, nobody in her life that really gives a fuck. You know, that's like, where is she? You know, no. They've all moved on. They're all doing drugs. They, you know, they're probably thinking, wow, that bitch was crazy. She did all that crazy shit. But, you know, they're not pining for her. They're not missing her. There's nobody waiting for her phone call. It's ever maybe tamer in Los Angeles, <laughs> who totally fell for her. Ugh, gross. I mean, they really were meant to be together, but she loves my vagina more than she loved Tamer. <laughs> so she's a very real person. She has a very real history. I'm sure at some point she had a birth certificate or something, or she was born. Um, she has a history of being in the Pacific Northwest. Not sure if that's where she was born. Um, um, but she's, you know, she's, she was stepped on by society and, but she never, ever, you know, thought more of herself. She never thought that she deserved more than, than what she became. And, um, all these people are using her and she thinks she's this queen bitch and nights at the Weatherman Hotel where she's like the, like, ah big time like look what I'm I've, I've got the party I've got all the drugs I've got the the unconscious woman to rape sodomize and torture we um yeah that's not really being anybody interesting or big time or whatever whatever you know it's 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 really pathetic she did. It's really pathetic. And that's what I would describe her as, pathetic. Mostly because she's helping the people that took her ability to be a normal human being away. She's decided to <laughs> play their game and be on their side and help them. The people who took her life and turned it into shit. That's the kind of person that she is. So she's not big time. You know, and also interesting to note is that at the end of the day, they'll probably kill her. I mean, I've described her to a T to multiple police officers, made in police reports, uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigations repeatedly um, in Hawaii, in 
you know, through all these states. Just think about it. If you were a drug trafficker, and think about sex traffickers and how they really feel about their women, and women just in general, would you, what are you going to do with her? What are you going to do with her? Like, I die, then what do you do with her? Are you, are you going to go stick her up into some other, some other woman's attic? I mean, is there really some other woman that they've already been terrorizing and stalking and gaslighting for a decade before they can get to this point where they can do this kind of stuff and get away with it and me not be, be believed? Because this is not like this just didn't just happen. You know, this is a systematic situation where they set this up where I'm in a position now that when I do call the cops, I'm not being believed. Part of that is mentally, I'm just, it's just a lot. <laughs> and to try to fucking, you know, especially in the moments where I'm fucking gang raped and horribly abused and hurting and in pain, it's a lot. And it's, it's hard to stay, keep my shit together and, you know, uh, I, I'm not a, a pretend kind of person, so I just sort of, I am where I am and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, yeah, this is part one of who Psycho Crazy Bitch is that cuts my hair. In fact, I will show you, well, maybe when I get back, I'll show you how she's cut my, my armpit hair <laughs> and how fruitcake she is. But, yeah, let's end it on the fact that I personally believe that the moment that I die, which could happen by my hand, could happen by somebody else's hand, could happen tonight when if they accomplish drugging me and I have a heart attack and the drugs they have don't revive me because my heart's just done, um, you know, <laughs> they'll kill her. That's what I think. I, I, I could be wrong. I could be. But she has no purpose then at that point. Unless, again, they have another woman that they've already systematically gaslighted and, and put into this position where they could shove her up in their attic and she could come down at night and, and serial rape, sodomize, sex traffic, and all do other things. You know? She doesn't have a place. She's not the, 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 the bitches that's going to be driving around in a car with a fancy haircut and makeup and nails and that sex trafficker. She's not going to be that girl. And I'm guessing she's not going to go back to being a bottom bitch. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I think she's great for pedophiles because she has the body of a child. Um, but the face of an old lady, so. Um, so, yeah, where will her place be? If I were a sex trafficker, drug trafficker, and I had gotten this crazy, insane homeless bitch to do all these horrible things, and that woman had been, I and 